And then the one other game I want to talk about before we go into the game show part is this little game called Blossom Tales, The Sleeping King. Mm -hmm. So it clearly mm -hmm. it looks a lot like The Legend of Zelda Finding... in the past. Yes. And look at that. It mostly plays like A Link to the Past. I was really impressed by this one. So kind of the story is... Um, there's kind of a meta story because it's a grandpa telling his two grandchildren uh, a story about a hero princess. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. And so you're playing through the story and there's kind of, there's elements of the, the story that you can actually control. So there is one particular element where you come up to a boss and then the kids have an argument of what the boss is. One says pirates, one says ninjas, and you actually get to choose which boss you fight at that moment. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Interesting. So a couple, cute, awesome. a couple of cute moments like that. Uh, I love the combat in this game because there's just tons of enemies on screen and lots of bullets to dodge. It does really test your dexterity in, in that regard. Um, and it's a it's a bite sized adventure. You can I beat it in about eight hours. Uh, pretty much. Are you lining it picking through. up corn dogs? What are those? <laughs> They're feathers. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Oh, they look like corn dogs. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> You got 30 out of 20 corn dogs. Yeah. <laughs> ketchup covered corn dogs. Yeah, I was going to say, weird red corn dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, corn dogs the are color like I would have picked for corn pogos, dogs, but... right? Pogos? Yeah. Yeah, po pogos. Pogos are a brand of corn dog. I don't yeah. know if they have those oh. in the States. This might be a Canadian thing right now. Yeah. Yeah, so... yeah I think so. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Um. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know where I was going with that like if everyone said yeah pogos that guy i don't know what i would have done after that um <laughs> yeah it's a it's like a really short a link to the past you can beat it in about eight hours and it's it's like a 15 or 20 dollar game so if you are looking for a zelda like experience uh, that you can play on the switch really quickly i would highly recommend uh blossom tales the sleeping king i'll have to look into that yeah definitely yeah. Mm -hmm. it's very cute and very fun I've just I've never gotten into indie games all that much. Like I'm more into them now than ever before, really. But I'm just holding out for like an amazing humble bundle or something to come along to get yeah. all these games. All right. So why do you not like indie games? Uh, um, you know what? Part of it is uh has to do with money. So I think that yeah, they're cheaper, like for sure. Uh -huh. But you know, fifteen twenty bucks for a game that's over in eight hours, like that's not bad but that's not the greatest use of my money at the same way. Like I'd rather wait and get uh, a better deal than that. Or I'd rather spend a little bit more money and buy like Spider-Man. So like I'm partly behind, I'm in between both those things. But outside of that, I just think that there's most indie games that I come across are based on like one to maybe two essential gimmicks as opposed to giving me a full quality game. Um, so an exception would be like Hollow Knight. I feel like Hollow Knight is very fleshed out and looks it looks good. It plays good, and it has a great like atmosphere to it, and the gameplay is good. So like that's a worthwhile game for me. Like I'd want to invest my time, but like this Blossom Tale looks cool, but it looks like it's just trying to be Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. Mm -hmm. So like I don't want to pay twenty, fifteen, or twenty bucks for a repeat, not nearly as good experience as that. Okay, I mean, fair enough. You mm. you have your reasons, and that's fine. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I don't think these games are bad. It's just there. It's not how I want to spend my time. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Too true. It's a very expensive hobby. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. true, for sure. I I think at one point I was also indie game averse, and I can't remember what the game was that tipped me over the edge where I just played it and was like, this is probably better than any of the full price games I'm playing right now. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, at a certain point, I just crossed that border where like it didn't really matter. A game is a game, and if it's good, then I'll play it. But I totally mm. understand how some people still have that aversion of like indie games are some sort of lesser tier. Mm -hmm. It yeah. could be too that there's really no guarantee of quality, right? Like, I mean, you're going by other people's word of mouth or by reviews or whatever. But I mean, you know, when you buy something like Spider Man, you you kind of understand what you're getting. But with, you know, especially with the way, you know, things like iPhone games and all these other sort of low budget games go, uh, some of them are awful. Uh, some mm -hmm. of them are really good, but you don't really have that kind of, uh, I don't know, I guess, compass to guide you. You're sort of like spend $15 on a game and, you you know, it could be good. It might not be. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it is, is that too. I don't know. 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah, that's how I feel. All right. When you uh, make this segment into a YouTube video, you can title it "Jason doesn't like indie games." <laughs> <laughs> Send all hate mail to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, hmm. Chris, Rachel, do you have any sort of aversion towards indie games? Not really. I mean, we'll try anything. <laughs> yeah, um, I've actually, I actually have a new appreciation for indie games now that we we started reviewing for um, another video game blog, and I actually started contributing to a digital Nintendo magazine. Oh, okay. so I get a lot of review copies for indie games. Nice. And um, some of the, I mean, it's definitely a hit or miss, but. But you get them for free. <laughs> but yeah, I get them for free. But also, you know, a lot of them, yeah, they are very, very short. Yeah. Uh, but some of them, they they are really good. Mm-hmm. For sure. Which one's been your favorite so far? I don't know. I've actually I've played a lot. There have been some that, like the one I've played recently. It's called Fernsgate, and um, it's an RPG, and it's. It's actually, it's really good. It's got a lot of, like, RPG elements to it with, like, extra twists and turns. Um, but then I also played Subara City, and that's similar to, like, Bejeweled, but it's houses, and there was just kind of no point to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a little strange, um, that one. Yeah. Hmm, but, yeah, you know, like I said, hit or miss. Yeah, for sure. I think you're, you're making me think of a, maybe more on this topic. Like, I think... Uh, if I'm looking at video games that I'm playing on a console, like I want to get that console experience and not an experience from a phone. Like Bejeweled yeah. is great. And yeah. like Bejeweled is a great, you know, PC game. It's a great phone game, but it's not really a great console game. So like I want to have that big experience. So like this game looks amazing, like the one that Jet's playing now. Um, but like I want it to be I want it to be Zelda and like it's not yeah. going to be. And so maybe that's why it's a little, you know, maybe a little mm-hmm. adverse to playing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. 